Insider Info. The wind now has watermelon juice. That's right, real watermelon juice. Bellagio and Aria have had this for years. Wynn stepping up their game, providing the freshest watermelon juice money can buy. And the bad news is Bellagio just downgraded their watermelon juice. It used to be only fresh for three days. Now they got enough preservatives in it to make it last for three months. You can taste the difference. Why not for yourself? We have arrived at the Wynn slash Encore property and we're here for a special reason. Today is day one of the Bank Rolex Challenge. That's right, not a bankroll challenge. Many people have done bankroll challenge. No, no one has done a bank Rolex challenge. That's right, we're gonna turn 10,000 USD into $13,000 profit so we can free roll our first ever Rolex. Not just any Rolex, this is a very special one. I've been researching it for a few months and this is the one I want. The Datejust 41 with the blue face and the diamonds, not to mention the fluted bezel, stainless steel, jubilee, bracelet. Mm. The blue faces are all the rage now, so it's going to be very tough to acquire. The actual price after sales tax is going to be $12,842.44. So we're just going to round up to $13,000 so I can enjoy a nice steak dinner with a buddy to celebrate completing the bankroll challenge. The rules are I have until the World Series of Poker starts to complete this challenge. So we're only looking at a couple months. Plan is to grind primarily on the weekends, Friday night, Saturday night especially, when the most tourists are in town and the most people are getting drunk. Apparently that's good for the game. I am a tournament player. I'm not a cash game player, but I'm gonna show what it's like for a tournament player to try to win a bunch of money in cash games. So I'm gonna share all the important hands with my thought process. And a lot of times my thought process is going to be off. Take it easy on me in the comments, but you can uh, state your opinion without being aggressive or abusive. And this begins session one of the Bank Rolex Challenge. Let's get it. For today, the strategy is to buy in for $500. It is a max buy-in of $1,500. Maybe stay around the $500 mark for the first hour just to get a good feel on the table, the dynamics, before we risk a lot of chips in an uncertain situation. So, in for $500, out for... With blinds at $2, $5, action folds to the cutoff, who opens to 15? I'm on the button with pocket eights, AKA the Ochos. Uh, I guess there could be a case for three betting here. I'm gonna have to work on getting more comfortable with my three betting ranges in these deep stack cash games, but I'm sure flatting is just fine. So we do that and the big blind comes along three ways to a flop of nine, eight, six with the beautiful eight of diamonds. Nothing gets my blood pumping like flopping a set. Unfortunately, both players check to us and a uh, very wet board. So let's get it while the getting's good. We put in a bet of $25 into a $45 pot. Big blind calls. He can have a variety of pair and straight draws. And the original razor folds. We're heads up to a turn. That is a nine. Probably better for the big blinds range, but he does check it to me. Of course, with a full house, we can't be scared of the old big lick. 69, we're not scared. We're going for value, I bet, $60. Big blind quickly puts in the call. Okay, hopefully he has a nine or uh, makes a straight or flush on the river. The turn did bring the backdoor diamonds. Nine of diamonds to be exact. The river is the 10 of diamonds. Straight flush possibilities as well as bigger full houses. He checks to us. We could check this back. We don't have the nut full house, but we can't be scared of monsters in the closet. And we put in the big boy bet, $175. He looks disgusted and he puts in the fold. And we take down a nice pot with a boat. Oh, that farm. Pounded with love.
With blinds at $2, $5. Action folds to a local reg, waiting for the 5-10 game who opens to 15 on the button. Guy on my right folds, and we're in the big blind with ace-king offsuit. $1,600 in front of us. He's got us covered. Do we go broke? Well, let's put it in the three bet and find out. 60 bucks to go. Original Razor quickly puts in the call. He wants to take me to Value Town. Let's play a little post-flop. Super deep. Flop comes ace, king, nine, two spades. We have the king of spades. That's a pretty good flop. Down bet, $50. He puts in the call. Pretty standard here. The turn is a offsuit deuce. That's what we call a brick, even in the tournament world. Time to size up, 150 USD. He calls again. At this point, I'm putting him on either a flush draw or ace X. The river is a safe one. Another deuce, brick, brick. Now it's time to go for that third street of value. Could be some argument for over betting here. Trying to make it look like I'm trying to fold out at the ace X chop, where we can incredibly rep aces and kings. But I don't think that's necessary. We still want to get that call from ace X. So I bet $400. He looks at me and says, I wish I knew what your vlog is all about and how you play. I say nothing. He puts in the call and I show him the bad news. Top two takes it down and we're sitting on over two Gs. That much closer to the Rolex. At first it might look like a very trivial hand, but I think this is an important spot to not miss out on value. We represent very little value hands and from our opponent's perspective, it's super easy to level yourself into calling with any kind of ASIC hand. Also with a king in spades, it makes it less likely that our opponent has a flush draw, right? So it makes it even more likely that we're batting into an, a very strong ASX heavy range. Yeah, once in a while he's gonna have pocket twos, pocket nines, so be it. So we definitely gonna be bad calling on the river. There's no way we can fold, but I would just go all in, over bet all in, and try to go for the maximum amount of value against his ace queens, ace jacks. I think they're going to be way too many strong ASX that he has a hard time folding, and then some other hero calls with ace x that he's not supposed to be doing so this is a spot where i would try to be as greedy as possible especially in live games where people and weaker opponents are very very curious and i would just go all in on the river my journey to acquire a rolex started a few months ago when i was hanging out with a bunch of rich art dealers and i noticed they all had rolexes on and i asked what's the deal with rolex isn't that a horrible investment they quickly corrected me and said Actually, it maintains its value or it goes up in price on average. Like, so I get to wear it and enjoy it. And worst case scenario, I break even. Sign me up. The problem is uh, Rolexes cost around, you know, $5,000 to $50,000, depending on which model you get. So knowing that this bankroll challenge would take multiple months and I've heard getting the watch you want from Rolex could take easily six months to a year. There is no formal process. You can't just buy it. It all seems to be the same thing at every Rolex dealer. I visited all six authorized Rolex dealers in the Las Vegas area to prepare for this challenge. And although they did have some inventory and I did try on a few Rolexes that I thought were pretty decent, they weren't the one I really had my heart set on. So I gave my name, number, I even put down a deposit at one of the places just to put my name on the list for when they get X watch into their store very scarce supply then they'll contact all of their uh, customers probably their previous customers first so I'm already at a disadvantage and uh, you know give them the opportunity to buy the watch go to a Rolex store you'll see the shelves are bare so all we can do is hope and wait and uh, pay retail apparently paying retail is a bargain I asked my buddy what he thought of the uh, blue dial 21 date just and he said how much are you paying for it and I believe sticker was uh, $11,850 and he said that's all you're paying you know not more there's no markup I said, I usually pay mark down, not mark up. And so hopefully I can get it at face value and enjoy this fine timepiece as it will signify the journey that I'm about to embark. The bank Rolex challenge, 10,000 into this fine piece of jewelry that I'll make many memories with over the years. We're right about to crush this 13K bank roll challenge. I don't know if I like this camera angle. What? I look, yeah. All right, there we go. Okay. We're here at the Encore. All right, we're Session here at the one. Encore. Session one, 13K cash game, Rolex bankroll challenge. Bank Rolex. Bank Rolex challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed, Rolex. A little humor. <laughs> with blinds at $2, $5. Under the gun, Asian woman with a big diamond ring on her finger. Puts the raise to 15 Canadian guy with a Jersey Shore haircut on my right puts in the call. We have pocket sevens. I guess there's some merit in a squeeze here with the sevens, but we're happy to see a flop and flop a set on him. We call and three other people call the button and the blinds. A little five-way flop with pocket sevens and it comes six, 
five, four, two diamonds. Well, uh, other than flopping a set, this is probably one of the better flops we can hope for, but we are somewhat concerned with this multi-way action. Original Razor does check. Gentleman from Canada, Jersey Shore haircut, bets $50. I think a flat here is just fine. A raise might be overplaying our hand, but we do want to deny some equity. This board is probably only going to get uglier unless we make a straight. But I'm scared money, so I put in the call of $50. And both blinds over call. What are they repping? Flush draws? Other straight draws? I mean, we have two sevens. There's not too many sevens remaining. All right, we're going to proceed with caution. The turn is an offsuit ace. The blinds check, and Jersey Shore on my right checks. Is there merit in betting here? I don't, I don't think, think so, so, Tim. Let's try to realize our equity with a uh, black eight on the river, perhaps. We check, and the river is a black eight. Bingo, bango, bongo, Vince. We have the second nuts, and we double block the old seven nine. Small blind checks, big blind checks, and guy on my right checks. So I think it's a pretty clear cut value bet here. The question is how much? Can't imagine too many worse hands are going to call, but I think $125 is the right price to get that value from a stubborn two pair. Small blind does the unthinkable. He check raises to $375. What's he repping? Historically in live poker, the river check raise is the super nuts. He's repping exactly seven nine. A lot of people will just just will just call here with a seven. The other two players fold down left of the decision. Can we make the biggest laydown possible? The second nuts with the double blocker. I don't think so, Tim. We put in the call. And this gentleman from Florida proudly shows six deuce of spades. Nice try. And we scoop a thousand dollar pot with pocket sevens. The challenge is off to a great start. In for 1500 out for 2475 a profit of $975 in approximately six hours of play. We did have a uh, nice dinner at Allegro with Biggie Blaine's. Check out Biggie Blaine's on Twitch. Feels good to book a profit. Let's get that rolling. The Bellagio, home of Brad Owen, Siegfried and Roy, Wayne Newt. I also saw um, my man Joe Ingram waiting for a little PLO game when I got here. Feels good to see some familiar faces with 90% of the occupants unmasked. Life goes on. It was a long year, but it's time to enjoy. With blinds at $2, $5, an elderly woman on my right open limps the cutoff. I'm on the button with King Jack of Clubs, a premium. I make it $20 to go. Very aggressive uh, button clicker in the small blind puts in the call, and everybody folds. We're heads up to a flop of 10, 9, 3, 2 clubs. We got the nut straight draw. We got two overs and a flush draw. I'm ready to get it in. He checks, I bet 25, and he quickly calls. The turn is a queen, but not the queen we really, really want. Anything but the queen of clubs, we might be facing a cooler situation here. He checks, and I could play it safe and check behind, but I think we're gonna go for some value. You could have a straight or two pair or a lower flush. So we bet $50, and he quickly puts in the call. The river is a brick, but not an exact brick, an eight putting a one-liner to a straight out there. Any jack makes a straight. Unfortunately, there's only three jacks remaining. He thinks about it for about 30 seconds, and guess what? He's leading into us, $130. Uh, he still might have the nut flush, and we could just put in the call, but we're not gonna get this Rolex by playing scared. I shove all in. $374 total, he goes deep into the tank. Will he call with a naked jack? Knowing this player, I think he will, even though no one ever bluffs here. He eventually puts in the call, and our second nut flush is good, and we take down a nice pot up to about $900. Good thing we stopped at the Bellagio to see a friend. Play a few hands of 2-5 No Limit for the Bank Rolex Challenge. Lose a few three bet pots, set mining, flop mining, and we cash out $830. Profit of $330. Chalk that one up to the 
green total in just over one hour of play at Bellagio. We're making good progress. We're in the zone. I still have a lot of things I have to work on uh, regarding what hands I'm flatting, what hands I'm three betting, how to proceed versus four bet, what's going to be more profitable depending on position. Probably going to check out the Raise Your Edge charts. Click my link in the description below. Raise Your Edge. Use my promo codes. You save money. I get money. Everybody wins. Shout out to my man, Ben CB, one of the best tournament players in the world. Learn from the best. Raise your edge today. All right, a quick overview on the differences between the win 2-5 No Limit and the Bellagio 2-5 No Limit. The first difference is at the win, min buy-in 200, max buy-in 1500. That's going to be a, a wide range, just like my button range. At the Bellagio, it is a, I believe it's a min buy-in 200, max buy-in 500. So 100 blinds versus 300 blinds, possibly a lot deeper as the night goes on. So keep that in mind if you want to play 2-5 at the win slash Encore property or the Bellagio. The other thing that that was brought up to me is the rake. Although the rake isn't outrageous like the Venetian, the rake at the win is actually much better because of when, when they actually rake a dollar at a time up to the $5 max. I didn't get a video of the plaque that shows the rake structure, but I'm pretty sure they don't rake the $5 until you get to $100. So I'm guessing it's every $20 increment as opposed to the Bellagio $10 increment. $50 pot, $5 rake. $90 pot at the win, $4 rake. That may not seem like a, a lot to you guys, but that's a big difference and it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. So going forward, I plan on playing a lot more at the win, of course, I'm biased. You know, I love playing at the win. Just another reason to pay less for more luxury and most importantly, a lot less smoking. The Bellagio bar is right next to the poker room where smoking is perfectly fine. And that smell drifts right into the poker room. No smoking in any close proximity to the Encore win poker room. Just saying, if you don't like cigarette smoke, play at the win. On that note, that wraps up episode number one. Two casinos, one night, $1,305 profit. We are exactly 10% of the way there. Let's keep the party going. Like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know where you want me to play, what you want to see, any pro tips on how I can profit more in cash games and get this Rolex much sooner. And I'm out.